Hey, friend, Chris here from WhiteLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to talk about a feature in Logic that just about nobody takes advantage of. And by nobody, I mean developers and manufacturers of audio interfaces. I'm referring to the audio device controls that are accessible from within Logic Pro with compatible audio interfaces that allow you to take direct control of your preamps on your audio interface from within Logic Pro so that you don't have to go to a separate software mixer to adjust things like preamp gain, turn on phantom power, turn it off, polarity invert, or even direct monitoring. So if you've never seen this before, maybe you've seen it in a video and you've always wondered, what the heck is that? Let's take a look in this empty project that I have on screen. So taking a look at the inspector on the left-hand side, or we'll even bring up the mixer as well, we have an empty audio track in this empty project. And let's assume that I want to record some vocals using the microphone at the back of the room. Well, to do that first, of course, we would go to the input selection or that channel strip for that empty audio track, click, and then select from the various inputs on your audio interface. So I'm going to select input number four. Okay, so now that I've selected input number four, suddenly there's a whole new set of controls at the top of the inspector and the mixer. And if you right click in an empty area of the mixer, we have various channel strip components that we can either hide or reveal and audio device controls are one such set of controls. But here's the thing, because I have a compatible audio interface that is the Apogee Symphony Mark II connected to my Mac, this audio interface is compatible with the audio device controls in Logic. So now I can take control of the various inputs of my audio interface right from within Logic and never have to go to that separate software mixer if I don't want to. I don't even have to control the interface if I don't want to directly from the hardware. Instead, first we have a drop down for various analog input types. So if I click this, I get the option of either a microphone analog input. So I'm gonna connect a microphone to one of the inputs of my audio interface to record using a microphone. Or I can set in this case to plus for DBU. So if I want to connect some sort of external hardware to my audio interface, I might select this analog input type. And other audio interfaces will provide you with things like instrument analog input. So if you're going to connect a guitar or a synth, you might select that. In this case, I'm going to leave it set to microphone. And next we have three buttons in this case that allow us to turn on and off either phantom power, a high pass filter if your audio interface provides one, as well as polarity invert if you're recording one instrument with multiple microphones. So a multi-mic drum kit where you set up various mics around a drum kit and you have like a top snare mic, a bottom snare mic, one is going to be out of phase with the other. So you might flip the polarity for one of those channels. And then lastly, we have gain control for our preamp. So if I turn on phantom power for the microphone in the back of the room and turn up the preamp gain, Let's see if I can record some signal of me talking in the room. All right, so the microphone in the back of the room that's recording me right now is a United Technologies Twin 87. It is a Neumann U87 clone, but it, it clones two variations of the U87. This is not an ad for the microphone, but I wanted to record myself through this large diaphragm condenser microphone in the back of the room so we can get an example of how easy it is to control the different inputs of your audio interface from Logic Pro, if that audio interface is compatible with the audio device controls. Now that's pretty handy, right? Being able to control your preamp and all the functions related to it of your audio interface, but from within Logic Pro, so you don't ever have to bounce to a separate application. I love this feature. But the audio device controls also provide direct monitoring, which you can enable or bypass on a per channel strip basis. So imagine with me, you are recording a vocalist, right? And you want to be able to record this vocalist without any latency. Typically, you would have to go to your separate software mixer application and enable the direct monitoring for your audio interface, and you would have to turn off software monitoring within Logic Pro, right? We don't want to hear two of that vocalist because through Logic Software Mixer, inevitably, there will be some latency, even a tiny bit. So we use the direct monitoring from the audio interface. But with the direct monitoring button of the audio device controls in Logic, instead of going to that separate software mixer, you just 
enable that option. And then that track that you're recording to will bypass any and all processing and routing in Logic Software Mixer. So in this case, you leave the software monitoring on and then you just turn on direct monitoring. And that vocalist will hear themselves without any latency, without any processing as well, but without any latency. So one such example might be that you're recording a guitarist who's gonna be playing through Amp Designer or Amplitude or some sort of amp emulation. So inevitably, they are going to have to be able to hear themselves through the software mixer in Logic Pro because that's the only way you're gonna be able to hear yourself playing guitar with those amp emulations. But let's say you're recording a vocalist at the same time and they don't want any latency. Well, you can leave direct monitoring off for the guitar player. So they'll be listening to themselves through Logic Software Mixer and then turn on direct monitoring for the vocalist so they won't hear any latency or any software processing as they record. Kind of the best of all worlds. I bring all of this up because the audio device controls have been with us in Logic Pro, even if you haven't used it as a user for many years now. And yet at the tail end of 2023, this last quarter, just about no developers, no audio interfaces take advantage of this open API that Apple provides to any developer that wants to integrate their hardware with the application. That's just craziness to me. I mean, us Logic users are a huge pool of people. I know this because companies of hardware of software will reach out to me in hopes I'll talk about their products because a huge part of their customer base are Logic users. Just take a look at the ads that you see in magazines online. Just take note of how many times you see Logic Pro in the ads. Everybody talks about Pro Tools. Everybody talks about Studio One and Ableton. And yet Logic Pro is the silent majority, right? So thinking of companies that offer digitally controlled preamps for their audio interfaces, because that's a pretty key detail here for taking advantage of the audio device controls and direct monitoring from within Logic Pro, such as Motu, Audient, uh, Universal Audio, Focusrite just released the fourth generation of their Scarlet series of interfaces, which have digitally controlled preamps. Even Apogee, who I declared had the best audio interface for Logic Pro users with the Element and Ensemble series. Well, they had to discontinue those interfaces, I guess, because certain parts were no longer available or out of production. They have the Symphony Mark II, which takes advantage of most of these features, not the direct monitoring, but that's like one interface the flagship interface and a line of interfaces. I'm just saying this is crazy. It's a gaping need for a huge pool of people. One company could easily dominate this category by using the audio device controls, that open API, and just suddenly be the best audio interface for a huge pool of people. I don't understand it. So I wanted to post today's video and rant. I don't usually post rants, but I wanted to post today's rant because this is stupid. What the hell? Sorry for swearing. But I'm going to tag a bunch of companies that provide these types of interfaces in today's video in hopes that we can get a conversation going. If you feel similar that you would love to have these features with your audio interface, I think it's time to start hitting the support forums and emails and just start hitting these companies, being the squeaky wheel that, you know, just gets attention to this fact that here's a feature you could serve a whole bunch of people very easily. Why aren't you doing it? So I hope you agree with me. In that case, I'll see you next week here on Wide Logic Pro Rules. Take care.